C Van Boss at HE.net talking about IPv6 on Friday, October 1st. Today we're going to respond to a type of comment that I've seen appearing more and more frequently. This comment generally reads something like this. The articles talking about IPv6 are great, but what the heck is a normal consumer supposed to do? The first thing that you can do is set up IPv6 connectivity on your home computer. While the amount of v6 content on the internet isn't so expensive or impressive at the moment, the number of v6 enabled websites will only rise in the next year. We'll watch how to set up v6 on my MacBook first using Hurricane Electric's free tunnel broker. For this project you'll need to use your web browser and the terminal application. Open your web browser and go to tunnelbroker.net. You'll have to make an account which only requires an email address. After accessing your account you'll need to create a tunnel. When you look at the screen it says that you'll need to know your IPv4 address. If you go to ipv6.he.net and look at the top of the screen, you'll see your IPv4 address looking back at you. When I first entered my IP address at HE's tunnel broker, I got an error message about my computer disabling ICMP and that I should grant permission to some HE IPv4 address. Well, I looked on Wikipedia and it told me that ICMP echo messages are generally connected to something with pinging. So I thought I'd look at my wireless router and my wireless connection and I saw that I'm using an EasyBox router from Vodafone. I googled this type of router to figure out the standard IP address that it uses and the standard username and password and I banked on the fact that no one had changed that information. That gave me access to my router and I disabled rejecting pings on the firewall that allowed HE to create the tunnel with my computer. I then used a configuration generator that's at the bottom of the tunnel broker screen. I selected my OS, the Macintosh OS, and got the following prompt. Now at least if your settings are like mine, you'll have to add the word sudo in front of all those commands that will allow you to make the necessary changes since you'll have super user permissions. The commands look like this, sudo ifconfig gif0 create, sudo ifconfig gif0 tunnel client ipv4 address, server ipv4 address, then sudo ifconfig gif0 inet6 client ipv6 address, server ipv6 address, then prefix len 128, the prefix len sudo root option or dash or hyphen so sudo root option n add option inet6 default and then the server ipv6 address again then just for luck at the end i added sudo ip6 option a on a macintosh this command enables ipv6 on all interfaces uh, option a is all interfaces option x shuts down ipv6 on all interfaces uh, option U starts IPv6 on a given interface and then option D shuts down an IPv6 on a given interface. In order to test your setup, you'll need to ping an IPv6 enabled site using the ping6 command. So I tried to ping ipv6.google.com and I failed. I read everything from the tunnel broker over again and checked the commands that I had entered. Everything was correct. Then I took a look at the bottom of the screen where the following note from Hurricane Electric reads, when behind a firewall appliance that passes protocol 41, instead of using the IPv4 endpoint you provided to our broker, use the IPv4 address that you get from your appliance's DHCP service. If you are on a wireless connection, chances are that you're using some sort of NAT setup. That basically means that your router has one IP, the one that you gave for your tunnel broker account and the one that shows up on ipv6.he.net but your computer itself has a different IP that's assigned by your wireless router. So you have to go to your system preferences, then to the network panel to get the address that the router assigns to your computer. You'll use that IP address for the client IPv4 address. Then I did another ping6 command, this time with success. Now I have IPv6 capabilities on my home computer. I can access any site that is IPv6 enabled, including Google. This setup will work as long as I am behind this router and as long as the router doesn't change its IP address. If I change my wireless network, I'll need to change that client IPv4 address configuration as well. Now there are scripts out there that check your IP address against your configuration automatically. I'll check out one of those, see if it's worthwhile, and then I'll get back to you with an update.